Oh, I'm a little bit nervous to do this video. <laughs> hey friend, welcome back to my channel. Now today we're gonna get serious and talk about money. Yes, I want to share with you my salaries that I've had over the years as I've been in the design industry. I was really inspired by videos from Charlie Marie who talked about her salary history and Han Bang who also shared a little bit about hers to do the same and be really honest and transparent with you about what a designer actually earns. So you'll see over the course of this video that I've had about a 92% growth in my salary over the last five years. And we'll go into a little bit of detail. I'll share with you promotions I've gotten along the way, pay rises, etc. So you'll see how that all came about. The main reason I'm making this video is to be really transparent and help you and other designers get paid what you're worth. I believe if we only stay silent about salaries and what we're making, then this is only going to penalize people who aren't good at negotiating or are not comfortable sharing that information. Now, in the last five years, I have lived in three different continents. So do keep in mind that the figures you're about to hear are relative to the country and the location and the place that I was living at the time. So it might sound high to you, it might sound low to you. Please do keep it relative based on where I was living and the amount of experience that I had at the time I was getting that salary. So I'm going to tell you the figures in the local currency. I'll include a USD figure as well, just so that it's there as a baseline. And know that these are all annual salary figures that are pre-tax. So these are gross base salary numbers. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. My very first design related job was at a small startup called Atomic. There was, I believe, 10 people there at the time when I joined. So it was a very, very small, early, early stage startup. And I was coming on board to wear a lot of different hats. I was going to do some customer support, some marketing and help out with any design related tasks, whether it be like making social media images, making icons, helping out with like graphic web marketing design, potentially product features. And I remember in my interview, they asked me what I was looking for and I really wanted 50,000 New Zealand dollars. And that to me felt like a lot at the time. I was still studying in my very last year of school. And so 50,000 felt like a lot. So I remember being really nervous when they asked me this question and saying like, oh, I would, you know, I'm really looking for something like 45,000, maybe 50,000. And I was so nervous when I mentioned 50,000. But in the end, that's what they offered me. They offered me 50,000. So I guess in a way I got what I asked for. And that was a bit of a lesson to like not be nervous and ask for what you think you're worth. So I got that job at a starting pay of 50,000 New Zealand dollars. And actually two months later, they came back to me and said that they felt like I was actually being underpaid. And so they bumped me up to 60,000 New Zealand dollars. And I remember at the time being so shocked. I was not expecting it at all. And I felt very grateful and very thankful and very lucky that the company would actually proactively reach out and give me like a $10,000 pay rise after I'd only been there for like two or three months. So that was very, very generous of them. And I was very, very grateful that they did that. So I guess I forgot to mention, but this was in New Zealand, which is where I'm from, in case you didn't know. And about six months after they'd given me this pay rise, it was about the time when I decided I wanted to move to Europe. With it though, of course, comes an adjustment to my salary. I actually went from being like a permanent employee to being a contractor uh, because of like, you know, legally they didn't have a business formed in the Netherlands and so I couldn't be an employee. So I basically became like a full-time freelancer in a way to the company and my salary got adjusted um, in all of this process as well. So I think, I can't fully remember, but I think they changed my salary to around 42,000 euros. So about eight months later, I think we must have done like some performance reviews. I hadn't really had any performance reviews uh, up until then at the company. My bumps in pay had just been from that really generous 10K bump and then like transferring to another country. Um, but we then did a performance review and I got a 7% pay rise to 45,000 euros at this time. So I think that was just kind of to cover like inflation uh, from the prior year and then also a little bit of performance increase as well. We didn't really have levels there. Uh, again, it was like a 10 people startup. Um, so the salary bump was really just to reflect like performance and inflation. And then I stayed at that salary for another year and a half. Essentially, it wasn't until 
August 2017 that I transitioned and made the move over to Uber. So I didn't get any other adjustments to my pay during that period. So it was around mid 2017 that I started looking for a new job and I was on 45,000 euros at Atomic and I was looking to make 60,000 euros. I was looking to get into a more uh, product design focused role at this time. You know, I said I was at the startup doing a lot of like customer support, marketing, lots of random odd jobs being at a 10 person startup. And now I really wanted to join a team and be like a full time dedicated product designer. So I knew that with that like came a more refined skill set. I felt like it was a higher valued job. And so I was looking for 60,000 euros. Now during the interview process, I interviewed at three places and they all asked me what my current salary was and I refused to tell them. Uh, instead, I responded telling them what I was looking for. And this is a pro tip here when it comes to negotiating and trying to get a new salary at a new job, never say what you're currently earning because that's totally gonna anchor them to what they think you'll accept as a reasonable offer. Instead, spin the tables around Around and say well you know what are you offering like what range you know is appropriate in your company for this kind of role or you could tell them what you are looking for which is what I did so I ended up getting three offers uh, which was amazing I was surprised if I was gonna get one to be honest one of them was for 38,000 euros and I was really disappointed I'd been really honest with them through the whole interview process and for them to come back and offer me 38 and I was on a current salary of 45 not that they knew that um, was disappointing I immediately declined I just wasn't interested in taking that much of a pay cut and I felt uh, that it, like straight away that was a no then the other two companies one offered me 60,000 so exactly what I had asked Asked for and then there was uber who offered me 63,000 euros so uber was a little bit higher than the other company and after some I mean and eyeing I eventually accepted and I took the job I did not negotiate my salary when I joined at uber and I was really excited about the opportunity and valued more the you know opportunity to learn and the value of being on that kind of team that I was just so stoked so I took the job and joined so when I joined Uber, I joined as a level three product designer one. And for the first year, I don't believe there was any changes to my salary. I think there might have been a slight bump at like end of year 2017. Um, but the biggest bump came in August 2018. So about one year after I had joined, I actually got a promotion to level four. My salary then increased to 76,000 euros. This was a very nice promotion. I was very, very happy. I think I also got a little bit of like bonus stock at the time, uh, which was also very generous of them. But I felt good at this point, you know, as somebody who had only really been doing product design for a couple of years uh, to go from like 45,000 euros pretty much a year earlier to now 76,000 euros felt like a good accomplishment. It felt really good to be rewarded and I was pretty happy with this salary. My next bump came in March 2019, which was an effect of our end of year performance reviews from 2018. And here I got a 4% raise to 79,000 euros. And this was basically just for like inflation and like performance over the year. I didn't get a promotion or anything. I'd only been in my new level for like six months. Um, so it was just kind of to reflect inflation and overall year performance. Then in August 2019, I decided to transfer to Toronto, Canada. Now it's really great that Uber has these internal transfer opportunities and I sort of applied and initiated a move cross country. So the offer that I got when I got the transfer was for nine, around 98,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, I wasn't changing levels at all. I was staying at exactly the same level, just moving into a different team. So they pretty much kind of just matched my salary at the end of the day, once you do tax and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and after talking to some people in Toronto, uh, 98,000 for like a level four product designer salary seemed on the high side. It seemed pretty good. Uh, so I was pretty happy with it and felt confident enough to accept the offer and move on this salary. Then about six months later, March 2020, which is the most recent bump I've had to my salary, uh, this is when we get our results from like end of year performance for the prior year. So for the year of 2019, I got my performance review for that year and my salary increased by 4.8% to 103,000 Canadian dollars. 
that is my current salary and that is what I am earning today. I think a whole like good lesson here is that it is worth negotiating. So the higher you can get your like base salary coming into a company, the more exponential your growth uh, is going to be during your time at that company. I think I've had a pretty good run here so far and having like very generous adjustments to my salary and very conscientious, conscientious adjustments as I've like transferred countries. Um, but just keep that in mind that if you go into a company really low, like I sometimes imagine now if I had taken that 38,000 euro job uh, back in 2017, I don't think there's any way I would be or I would have made it to like the 79,000 euros that I was on when I left Amsterdam. So that is my salary and I hope that this transparency has been beneficial for you. Again, this is very you know, relative to your location, where you live, your experience, the company you're working for. I think me working for an American company in Amsterdam really helped boost my salary there compared to working for a local Dutch company. So just keep in mind that it's all very personal and relative, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight into like what a potential salary could be for a product designer. Okay. That was scary, but I'm kind of glad I got that off my chest. I cannot wait to read the comments, but thank you so much for watching this video and letting me be honest and transparent, which I feel like I can be with you on this channel. So thank you and I'll catch you in a future video. Bye-bye.